And the Lord God bless you, God keep you in perfect peace. Justify him. Well, it's late. Oh, one thirty-two in the morning. Oh, wow. I have watched the movie and I've been listening to it. Gospel music. It's John P. Keith. Well, I was going to wait till the morning and make a video. <coughs> oh, but since I'm up, <laughs> yeah, like my little party bubbles and little bottles. Oh, it was a long day today. Uh, I made it to church as I stated in my previous video and um when I arrived at church what was so marvelous which the pre uh, pastor Wills preached uh, it's God's will that was the title of the sermon which was absolutely fantastic and uh so I'm sitting in church and I look and behold there's one of my friends like I said I, I say I don't have friends but I was like that's my friend uh, his name, well, his name was, his first name was King. But he was sitting in church. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, nah, it can't be him. I look, and I'm like, oh, my God, it is. It's my friend. Oh, wow. I was so glad to see him. I mean, it made my day. He was sitting in church. And I was like, I ran up to him and spoke. You know, and uh, I mean, it was great. It was great. You know, I met him. I've been knowing him for seven years. Oh, my God. He, he's cool. He hasn't changed. Not one hour older. But, you know, he, his features have changed. He has a beard now. But other than that, it was nice seeing him. Yeah, he, he's one of my true people, you know. He always talks to me about healthy foods to eat and staying in shape and fasting. So he's always been a positive influence in my life. And I was so, I mean, I'm just, I was just astonished to see him in church because he had been crossing my mind, you know, because we used to sit down and we had cool conversations, but it was really wonderful to see him sitting in church. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, Pastor Will preached so well. He's bringing everybody in. I was like, oh, my God. So it was wonderful. It was really wonderful. The sermon was great. Um, uh, the pastor, uh, as Pastor Wills was preaching, he was talking about um, Paul. And after Paul had been beaten, had Paul went and traveled and Basically being in God's, uh, doing what God wants to do and not do, staying in your own will. And not letting people tell you what to do. And what I loved about the sermon, I heard him preach this part before where he talked about power was with, uh, I forgot the guy's name, my bag. But anyway, how he separated friendships with somebody. They didn't get along, so rather than keep arguing, they separated. But Paul, the pastor was saying that he should have gave the man a second chance. But I understand Paul's situation. If I've been through trials and tribulations, you didn't have my back the first time. I'd be darned if I'm going to give you a second chance. Yeah, maybe I had a second chance, but now it's down to the wire. Now every dog for himself see you. And so they parted ways, and Paul went on his journey, and Paul ended up going on a journey on his own. But basically through it out, talking about doing God's will, going and doing what God directs you to do, turning over all your will and your authority to God. And he talked about that. But in the process of that, what has been heavy on my mind all day that really is like a stinger. You know, I had other things on my mind. But one big thing that the pastor preached about that really kind of stuck with me and kind of perturbed me 
it didn't perturb me. It just made me look, you know. Uh, he talked about uh, uh, people talking to themselves, and he's mentioned this before. And I talked to myself. <laughs> so, you know, it kind of like stepped on my toes. It's not that the pastor stepped on my toes. I'm quite sure other people, you know, whatever. But I just want to address that. And um, I talked to myself. And I'm quite sure. I know people see me talking to myself. I always talk to myself. And uh, uh, I, and he was talking about, he said, when people talk to themselves, they talking to God. And, and uh, he was talking about, too, he said, when people, they want to, he's not going to, uh, petition or anything to get prayer back in church because uh if you want to pray nobody know you praying you know what i'm saying and, but when he was talking about people talking to themselves he said yeah most time people talk to themselves nothing's wrong with it but most sometimes people are talking to god i'm not talking to god all the time i'm not going to tell a lie i talk to myself and i don't have a problem telling a person that you know what i'm saying i'm not crazy and so, uh, like I said, uh, I was, uh, I had watched this movie. I nodded off, woke up, nodded off, woke up, because I really wanted to see the finished movie. It's called Mr. Right. Anyway, um, after watching that later on, I was still, I was still, it just came on my mind about talking to myself. And I'm like, when I talk to myself, I li I talk to myself because I used to be in relationships and I always had a dude next to me or my kids around me that I was talking to. But think about it. A lot of people, we talk to ourselves, when, especially when we get angry. You know when somebody ticks you off, you get in the car, you done left the conversation, argument, you done walked away, and you get in your car, what do you do? You sitting in your car. Now she didn't say that. I know she didn't say that with that ugly dress she was wearing. Who are you talking to? You talking to yourself. And so that's what I do. I talk to myself. So with that being said... This is the type of person I am. I, I could uh, show you better than I could tell you. So I looked it up, you know, about talking to yourself. Because, like I said, I be in a car and I be, I don't just be, I don't be sitting in there like some mentally ill people. They're talk, they talking to voices in their head. They're answering and responding to, to responding to voices in their head. I don't do that. I just said, and I might be talking about, yeah. I, I don't know if I really want to go down here to this restaurant. That's how I talk to myself. So, <clears throat> I tweeted this and I placed it on my Facebook. I Google everything. I look up stuff. And, uh, 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 the title of this is, People Who Talk to Themselves Aren't Crazy, They're Actually Geniuses. <laughs> Hello, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, here's some of the things. It's about Elite Daily. I talk to myself a lot, and I don't mean only in the privacy of my own home. I talk to myself while I'm walking down the street, when I'm in my office, and when I'm shopping. Thinking out loud helps me materialize what I'm thinking about. It helps me make sense of things. It also makes me look insane. Crazy people talk to themselves, right? They're conversing with voices inside their heads. If you're yammering on to nobody, everyone thinks you're a mental patient. I'm positive I look disturbingly similar to Goliam in the Lord of the Rings when he dotes over his precious. Well, the joke is on the judgmental ashes <laughs> who give me a sad eye on the train. By the way, I see you. Talking to yourself, it turns out, is a sign of genius. Hello, Albert Einstein used to talk to himself, too. The smartest people on earth talk to themselves. Look at the inner monologues. Of the greatest thinkers. Look at poetry. Look at history. Albert Einstein talked to himself. He wasn't an avid social butterfly. when He was an avid social butterfly when he was growing up. And he pre preferred to keep to himself. Einstein.org reports that he used to repeat his sentences to himself softly. 
Make sure y'all look it up. Einstein dot up. Uh, Einstein dot org reports that he used to repeat his sentences to himself softly. So you see, I'm not alone and I'm not completely bonkers. I'm just really smart, huh? <laughs> so talking to yourself makes your brain work more efficiently. But like I said, I know uh, I'm quite sure a lot of people, especially around the church, they see me talk to myself and uh, they 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 see me my lips moving. And uh, so I mean, yeah. I had to back that up, and I'm glad, I'm glad the pastor brought that up. Sometimes I do. I have conversations with God. I talk to God, and I talk to myself. You know, I talk to God about me. <laughs> uh, so, yes, um, uh, there it is. I wanted to put that out there because it was bothering me. And, it, and when the pastor preached it, it really, uh, it really, uh, it really opened up, you know, it opened up something, you know, it opened a door and I just wanted to address that. So, yes, I do talk to myself and as, as the uh, article stated, like with Albert Einstein, not to mention, look at his hairstyle, which I'm getting ready to freak out my hairstyle too. Hey, I'm getting ready to do a crazy hairstyle. But uh, I ain't got no choice because I went and did some dye and put no perm. It's ugly. But anyway. Look at Albert Einstein's hair, and then um, talking to yourself, I converse with myself, like I said, because I don't have any bad, I don't have no friends and people constantly riding in the car to or fro with me. So I'm alone quite often, so therefore I'm the only person that I can kick it with and kind of share some thoughts, <laughs> you know, talk. But um, I have my silent times, but I have my times when I talk. You know, but, uh, uh, it's a good thing, you know, and and, I, and like they said in the article, some people are so judgmental, you know, people will call you crazy, but like I said, if crazy is taking care of yourself and paying bills every day, then I'm crazy, you know what I'm saying, you know, crazy people don't function well, crazy people need to be People, crazy people, people that we call crazy are people with mental illness need to be addressed as a human being, not just something laying in the street because they are human. I, I, uh, there's a man that's at the library. He, he used to always be at the library. And um, he talks to himself. He don't talk to himself. He talks to other people. And you can tell that, that they in his head. And... Uh, he sits in the library. He's a nice looking man. But, uh, you know, he'll walk back and forth. He'll walk around the library. And they just, they so familiar with him. Nobody says anything to him. But he just walks back and forth. And he has his conversation. And he just a constant talker. Constant talker. You know, what did you say? And you said this. And, you know, you don't tell me this. So, those, that's the difference somewhat between a person that talks to themselves and a person with mental illness somewhat, you know, which some people with mental illness are geniuses too. It's just some people need medication and some people don't. Some people need therapy, you know, some people need counseling and they don't have it. And then some people have mental illness and they take drugs and alcohol and it escalates the mental illness. That's untreated mental illness. So, but like I said, we shouldn't be judgmental, look down on anybody. But anyway, if a person judge me for talking to myself, I don't need to talk to him anyway. So I'm fine with that. But I wanted to put that out there. Yes, I talk to myself, and I'm not always talking to God. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, also, I was just watching this movie. And like I said, it was called Mr. Right, and uh, it put a lot on my mind. I, I was thinking, you know, is that, uh, like I said, I be thinking. Um, in relationships, you know, I hear people say, I don't worry about getting in a relationship. A lot of people don't worry about you getting in a relationship when you single and they marry, so they got somebody to go home and lay with. Then, then you're in a, you single, so it's a different story, but. That's not important. I do like that the pastor emphasizes that. We can put too much emphasis on that. 
I got to be in a relationship. I got to be in a relationship. But what I was watching this movie, and she was like, she found Mr. Wright. And, uh, and I was like, wow, that's true. And I'm like, I, I like that. Too often, especially when I was younger, too often we run around and we we looking for Mr. Right. We looking for this right person. Well, let me take that back. We looking for anything. We looking for the relationship. And we get in and we're not compatible. We don't have anything in common. And it, it, and it doesn't work out. And what I like about this movie, it had a nice twist to it. it and that's the way I believe I believe God will give you what you need, and I want to. I choose. I choose to wait on God to give me what I need and not what I want. And the movie it was nice. It was a African American film, and it was a love story, but it was funny too. It had a lot of comedy in it. This is great. But I like it because she was a writer and he was an artist, and they had something in common. And I don't believe. I I think it's family for other people, but I think also that. I believe what God wants for me is somebody that I would have something in common with. I know with, with my life, it would be good for me to have something in common with. I think too often we get to, oh, well, that's not it. That's not it. You know, when God sent us something our way. And we looking for them to, I don't know, some people looking for somebody to have a lot of money, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't know, big cars and all that. And the, that's not what God's trying to give us. I think God wants us, number one, to have somebody that's spiritually connected to us. Somebody that believes as you believe. Like I said, I can't comment on everybody else's story. I know with me, I believe in God. And I know God's not going to put me with somebody else's husband, number one. He's not going to put me with an unbeliever. Not me. I don't believe that. I can't see me. I've been around an atheist. I've been around a couple of atheists. And... I can't see me and them conversing. We don't have none. Uh, when I was taking a college course, my uh, I was taking astrology. Yeah, it was my astrology class. And uh, I was introduced to an a, a article about Degrassi, Neil Degrassi. And he's, he, was, he was a confirmed atheist. But I noticed here lately, sometimes when I catch all the articles and he's talking, he uh he, he seems to realize now I don't know what God did to him, <laughs> but you know he will work on you. That's why I tell you. That's why I keep my faith in God. Cause like I said, I tell you some things, but I I be into a lot of stuff. <laughs> I like to read. I don't get to like I want to. I got seven or eight books and I want to read. But um uh, anyway um uh, but his name is Neil deGrasse. Look him up. Uh, he's an astrologist, and uh, he was a confirmed atheist, meaning he didn't believe in God at all. He don't believe in, he didn't believe in God. L listen to his early works, because when I, t I had taken the astrology class, we had to listen to little, uh, little all kind of uh, uh, little videos and stuff about him. And anyway, he was talking about the earth, the atmosphere, and what's beyond our atoms, and all of this and that, you know. Uh, there, there can't be a, there, there can't be a God and all this and that. So, anyway, he didn't believe in God and um, so I'm just sitting there and I'm listening to it, you know, cause I, I have an open mind. I listen, you know. I used to have it closed, but I listen. So I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? How can you say there's no God, you know? But he could actually say it, and I mean, he's a very intelligent, very intelligent man. You know, I think he's uh, I think he's an African American. I'm, I don't know, but uh, I mean, he uh, he's very intelligent, and I mean, you listening to him is powerful. But he didn't sway me from my belief. But he's very intelligent, you know, and uh, his vocabulary is awesome. But um, like I said, those was years ago, and her recently, I think it's probably 2016 or 17. He has a new book out or something. He was on this program. And he was talking, and uh, as he was talking, he was saying that um, uh, the guy asked him, "What's beyond the, uh, you know, when you look in the in, in the sky, what's beyond the earth?" He, they have the term for it, the layers of the sky, and you pass the moon and Neptune and all this type of thing. 
once you pass out there, what's there? And he said, what we did discover, you know, he said, once you go past there, it, 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 it just keeps going on. And so it does make you think who, what is beyond there. You know, and I'm like, I'm listening to this man who was a confirmed atheist end up admitting it, it, it has to be some type of creation. It has to be some something there. If somebody is, some, it is, there is an existence. There is, a, 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 if you want to call it, he said something to that term, a God. He said, but there is something. He said, yeah, we, we studied and we're going beyond there when we keep going out there. He said, basically, you know, if you look beyond the stars of the sky, how did all this come about? And he said back, and he heard is a confirmed atheist, said back then, well, it got to be a God is the whole point I'm making. He, he tried to twist it around because he knew that the people were going to come back and say, oh, first he said there wasn't no God. Now you're going to say there's a God. But I know, I already knew when I first heard him uh, last year, I knew the guy. I'm like, God, I know how you are. I know, mm-mm, because he was bragging. I mean, he has a whole lot of articles and all kind of things. I'm not knocking the man because that's how God turned you around like he did Paul. Paul was killing Christians then God turned him around. But I mean, you when you sit down and you listen to a person just constantly can rave. And I mean, he's not raving. I'm talking about a person talk real intellectual. I mean, breaking stuff down. I'm talking about very educated. And you hear them talk about how there is no God and explaining why he believes that there is no God. I mean, it's powerful. It's powerful. I wouldn't want to be with nobody like that, but I mean, it's powerful. And then turn around, here it is. I'm like, God going to get him. <laughs> I already, I'm like, God going to get him. And God did. God, I don't know what God did to him. But he, like I said, he was on the show eating the hot chicken wings, the river hot chicken wings. And he was talking to the guy. And he ended up saying that, yeah. He said, yeah, we went behind. We, done, we looked. As far as the accuracy, the telescope and all that, and you keep looking. And there's more out there. There is an existence. There is there is some something there. Something had to create this. It's not a bang. The Big Bang Theory is what I'm trying to get to, too. Is that uh, when you study astrology and uh, the, uh, the stars and everything, they want to say that it was a big explosion. You know, yeah, I went to school one day. <laughs> and there was a big explosion, and out of the explosion, the earth was created. I, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> every time that people came, some people in uh, anthropology, you came from, hey, yeah, right. I, I, I just re yeah, well to me. But anyway, yeah, but it's wonderful to hear some that. So the point I'm making is, guy, I don't believe the guy that I saw, he's not going to put me with somebody that I don't have something in common with. And I think the whole point that I want to say, not emphasize, I'm steady trying to look for somebody because I went through some hurt, and so I'm not eager to jump into a relationship, and I don't want that fly-by-night stuff anymore, so that's why I, that's not that important to me, you know, not that right there, but for uh, other people, slow down. I have been encouraging my kids, you know, and they looking like, Mama, you're not in a relationship. I don't want to just be with anybody. I've been there, done that. I, it's t it's a time in my life. I'm old. I, it's a time in my life to want what I need and not what I want. But for them, I want them to get married. I want them to settle down. I want them to get into a permanent relationship. Hopefully with their, I wanted it to be with their kids' mothers and and the fathers and stuff, but that don't seem to be working out. But <clears throat> I want family. When I'm talking about telling other people, I'm constantly telling other people to get together. It don't matter if the man got a job. If you can take and work your things out, sit down and talk and communicate. You know, don't wait and think, I was, and he don't have a job. I don't want to be bothered with him. He's my kid's daddy. I don't want to be bothered with him. Because he don't have a job, he don't want to. He don't have no dreams, no goals, nothing in life. Then he gets killed. Then you turn around. Oh my God! I wish I would have just went on and brought him in. Oh, he he did try to be around the kid. I mean, that's all I'm saying. 
you know, if you can have the father in the house, if you can have the mother in the house around them kids, and 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 and, and that's in your heart that you want to be with that person, not in your head. Don't love nobody in your head. Love somebody in your heart. Like I said, it took me a long time to get to this place. But love somebody in your heart, not in your head. Loving a person in your head means oh, you're looking for the material thing. He got to have a car. He got to have a job. He definitely got to have a job. You know, he can't be living at his mama's house. He can't be living at his daddy's house. All those little taboos. To me, those are totally taboo. All of that's hogwash. It doesn't matter. If you love somebody, then make a way. Make a way for that for that relationship to work. You know, yeah, it's nice if a person has a job when you start now. But do they need a job or do they need an income? <laughs> I'm going to let you figure that one out. I ain't going no further than that. You know, I'm just saying love somebody. We need to get, we need to bring back families. I was also online today, you know, um, I was online trying to join some more organizations, but I'm trying to get some, uh, uh, the people from the, the woman from the, uh, Poor People's Coalition, she called me back, uh, she emailed me, and so it took me a minute, so I emailed her back, and I'm like, well, what can I do? You know what I'm saying? Let's get some story. I, I don't want to hear all of what you're doing there. I want to know what's going on here. You know, all of your little statistics and stuff like that and seeing film. I, let's, let's stop talking about it. Let's be about it. And I, I wasn't aware that we have a whole lot of social justice organizations here. But <laughs> that's another story. So I have to look into some more of those. You know, like I said, it's, there's not very, there's not too many organizations that I've noticed. I'm missing them. If there are some, email me, text me, or whatever. But it's not too many where you can just say, okay, let me join. Let's be a part. Let's sit down at this table. Let's think. Let's put some things. Let's put some things on paper and then put it into action. You know, that's what I want to do. And uh, like I said, I was trying to get online also to put my, uh, put the little, uh, the meeting with the, oh, I did put it on. I put it on the U of L. Uh, U of L has some type of list, and so I placed the article there concerning uh, me meeting down there with the elderly for the bank, uh, banking online. But I was trying to do it on Yelp, but Yelp was saying do something. I don't know. It can't, it can't lock me out, so I found some more places to post it. But it is, it should be a paper posted down there at the 39th Street Library talking about the meeting. I just have to add a telephone number to it. And I did add the telephone number to this one. But, uh, yes, that's what I'm in the process of doing. Like I said, it's the uh, first Tuesday of the month. Um, I mean, just trying to get some things moving. Just get things moving. Just sitting back too, taking time to sit back and just look at my life and where it's going and what what's going on. While I was out today, it was raining. It just kept on raining. I went and sat around some more friends and. Some things I have been missing to get my head together, you know. In the process, I realized, you know, drinking, drinking is is okay for some people, and drug is I don't know about drugging, but drinking is okay for some people. It's not for me. And I think about I was thinking today, is that. When, when I used to drink, I used to drink to forget. I had a whole lot of hurt going on, a whole lot of things going on, so I was trying to forget it, numb myself. So I don't feel that I need to numb myself now, so I really don't feel like, I, I, I did, I, I did, I numb myself from some pain, some things and ugliness that I didn't want to see anymore. 
Now, if I was to take a drink, I'm drinking because I don't want to deal with the reality of my life. And that's a difference. Because I know what I know now. But I also know that to take a drink now, it has precautions. It should be on the label, but it ha I need precautions to take a drink. Because you take a drink, like I said, and this is what I do. I was thinking about taking a drink. Like, darn, God forbid, I take a drink and then innocently have to get behind the wheel and the police pull me over. And then you get, you know, you get a DUI and all you did was just take, take, take a two, 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 drink two beers or something, you know. And here it is, he hadn't had all those problems, but then you bring that back in your life. You know, why bring why bring problems back in your life? Why invite evil back in your life? Because that's what it was for me. It was evil. Why should I think that it's going to change? You know, now I'm going to take a drink, you know, after a long period of time and everything's going to be okay. No, it's not going to be okay, you know. It's not going to be okay because... The little bit of dreams and the little bit of hope that I have would be diminished. Because trying to function when you're drinking, I don't know, a lot of people probably do, but now that I tend to have my start drinking now, nah, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> it wouldn't be pretty. I mean, it's not that I get bucked well, but I really probably got, I got a tendency, if I'm drinking, like Pastor said, you speak your mind, I end up speaking my mind. Real quick with authority, I get to drinking, you know. But um, I, I don't need that. I don't need that. We need to pray. Just pray. Just always pray. 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 Well, I got to return to the whatever, which I would say yesterday, but, it, but yesterday is today now. Today's Thursday. Time to go in. Bake the cookies. <laughs> Make the biscuits and all that. I'm not talking to myself right now. I'm talking to you. <laughs> uh, no, just thank it. It was a thank you day. You know, I had tears in my eyes. And I don't know, it's just, just life. Life shows up in all types of ways. Just things that, I don't know. It's just life. Shows up. And it shows out. I think what bothers me more about life than anything, especially not drinking and not being high, is the uncertainty of life. Uh, the uncertainty of truly what's to come, what the future holds, what's going to happen next. Whereas when I was drinking and getting high, Whatever, in case a rise a ride, whatever we'll be, we'll be. <laughs> you know, at nine, like you know, a little attitude, like whatever. You know, f this. You know, having the attitude going through life, missing time, missing days and years, cause you had. You know, so yeah, I don't miss that. But the uncertainty is like, it's just, ooh, it's like a horror movie, <laughs> you know, you just wait, what's going to happen next, <laughs> what's going to happen, you know, God, what's going to happen, tell me, what's going to happen next, you know, what are you doing, you know, the pastor preached about everything, God's working everything out, we just don't see it, but you know, I'm like, I want to see it, <laughs> what's going on, what's going to happen. Just that mystery.
Oh, well. I don't know. Not my will, that will be done, isn't it right? Yeah, not my will, that will be done. So, with that being said, I guess I call it a night. Really, I'm used to this because I'm third shift, so this is not really that unique for me. Uh, well... I guess I'll go to sleep now. I know. I pray that God keeps you. I pray that you find understanding. Find understanding in your relationships, in the relationships with your children, with your husband, or with your significant other. I pray to God that every tear that you cry, that God gives you a smile. Um. Like I said, I'm just holding on. I'm holding on. And uh, the devil got busy with me early today, you know. Like, oh, you go to church too much. You always in church. That's how you do. You go to church. You, you don't take and have no me time. You don't spend time doing the other thing. Look at you. So today, I made sure I went out and did some little things for myself. Yeah. I didn't shop or nothing. I just rolled around a little bit and then like I said, went home with some people, you know, from the past at the and then um uh, I went and bought my little cheese crackers, you know. And uh other than that, that was it. You know. But we have those out of the the voices, you know, the voice you hear telling you something negative, and it talks to you about you going to church too much. That's how you do, you know. And I I I look at everything, you know, and I'm like, but that boy, I do it with the devil. But also, when I'm thinking, I was like, yeah, I was. I don't want to overdo it because you gotta have some type of joy in your life. You know, not to say that I'm not joyous when I go to church, but going to church because you have a desire to want to be in God's presence is one thing. Going to church because you don't have anything else to do, that's another. And so I try not to go to church like that. You know, I, I, I was doing that. I did that a couple of times, but I didn't do it often. Like sometimes if I wouldn't, I might do bass and lay down at night, I would do St. Steve. Which I passed that season day. And that's what I thought about. I knew I was tired though. So, but I started to go. And then it, that's when I said. Oh no nah, I'm just going to be going. You know I would be just going in the church. Just to be going. For something to do you know. Which I was already told I had I got plenty to do. You know trying to catch up. But just fire just for me time. And I was like no. So I didn't go. You know so it was a perfect time. But I didn't go so yeah. Thanking, talking to myself and all of above and going to church and hearing a wonderful sermon. Yeah, it got me on the straight and narrow where, yeah, I go to church to serve God. I don't need to just pop in the church and just sit there because I don't have anything to do. And so I need to monitor myself and I need to um, to relax. That's really all. And I, I think that's what God was saying for me, to me, you know. When I had that dream, because I couldn't figure it out. It seemed like I was in bed, somebody was at the foot of the bed or whatever. And I think it's God just telling me rest. Which I know he had been saying that to me, that I needed to rest. You know, because like I said, you know, when you work in, um, oh man, it's just weird. When you work in third shift, you're, 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 you're trying to catch up each day. And, and it's difficult because once you lose time, you cannot get it back. You cannot get it back. And that's one thing that God has really emphasized real strong to me about this shift. You know, is that, wow, once you lose time, you can't get it back. You try it, and it's stupid. You can't get it back. That time's gone. So you got to make the best of what you have. And I love, too, it hit me, is that 
I keep thinking everything's permanent. God has God can place you somewhere temporarily. He got other other plans. He has everything worked out. And so I just had to just trust and believe. I ha I could choose to trust and believe. I could trust and doubt. You know, I I could not trust and doubt. I could just doubt it. That he's not gonna give me the things that I want and I'm not gonna see it. But um I'm holding on to belief that it will come about. That's what I'm, I'm praying about. And I don't believe it's just by my hand. It's got to be more his hand than mine. Um, like I said, um, God bless you and keep you. And remember that tomorrow is not always promised to you. So make the best of each and every day and every second. Especially when you're around your family and your children. Make sure you tell them that you love them and, and you, uh, you're proud of them. Encourage them. Um, what they say, dote on them, you know. For tomorrow may never come. God bless you and keep you. Ta-ta.